days, I like to start my morning off with a smoothie. Now, today I'm using bananas, a big heaping scoop of peanut butter. This is a gym day for me, so I'm using some extra peanut butter for the protein. Frozen strawberries, frozen raspberries, frozen pineapples, and some almond milk. And then I'll put either water or juice. Sometimes I make more green smoothies. Sometimes I use more fruits. Um, it really just depends. I usually always throw a handful of either spinach or kale in there as well. If I'm using a lot of greens, then I'll put a little bit of juice just to sweeten it up. I usually use apple juice. Um, but if it's mostly fruits, then I'll use water. And just blend that and I make about 24 ounces which is about three cups so I'll have that throughout the day just to sip on usually most of it gets finished for breakfast just because they're so delicious but I try to save a little bit to, to sip on throughout the day doesn't always happen though for lunch I've been obsessed with these tomato and basil flavored whole wheat bread that my mom found in the supermarket it's actually by Panera Bread, and they're seriously so good. So depending on how hungry I am, I'll toast one or two pieces. And while that's toasting, I'll prepare the good stuff. Since I'm using one slice of bread today, I'm going to use half of an avocado. Now, if you guys know anything about me, you know that I love avocados. But what you might not know is that for most of my life, I wouldn't even try half a bite of one. It wasn't until maybe two or three years ago that I finally tried some and became utterly obsessed. So I'm just mashing it up in a bowl with a fork and adding some ground black pepper, garlic salt, and some ground up flax seeds. I'm also slicing up half of a tomato. When my toast is done, I'm just going to spread the avocado mash on top, layer the tomatoes, and there you have a super quick and delicious lunch. At this point, I'll start to prepare some iced tea for later on. So I just fill my teapot and let the water boil. And I'm going to be using chamomile tea today, which is great for relaxing your muscles, calming, relaxing, and quieting the mind as well. And it's actually really good for upset tummies too. So once the water is boiling, I'm going to take it off the heat and add about three tea bags. Stir it for a bit and just let it steep. Chamomile tea can actually taste pretty bitter if you oversteep it. So for hot tea, I would leave it under 10 minutes, about 8 minutes or so. However, for iced tea, I would recommend 10 to 15 minutes since the ice is going to actually water down the flavor a bit. You want to let it steep more and make it a little bit stronger. Um, I'm actually using reusable ice cubes today, as you guys will see later on. So I'm only letting it steep for about 10 minutes. And then after that, I just remove the tea bags. And I'm going to let it cool in the pot since the pitcher that we have is made of crystal and my mom has drilled it into my head that you cannot ever put hot liquids in crystal because it'll break or explode or something and she'll basically kill me. Um, so I'm just going to let it cool down right in the teapot. Later on, I'll usually have a snack. I want something at this point that's really quick and easy to make. So I'll usually just grab like a granola bar and some fruit. Today, I had some kiwis that I just got that were so delicious. So I cut up two kiwis and some strawberries as well. And um, yeah, I just had the fruit with a granola bar. These are actually my favorite, favorite, favorite granola bars right now. They're the kind bars. Um, and this is actually my favorite flavor as well. This is the dark chocolate nut and sea salt. The peanut butter one they have is also really good. Um, I'll leave some links down below. They're like $1.50 each, but if you get the box on like Amazon and stuff, it's a lot more cost effective. And to go along with my snack, by this time the tea should be nice and cool down to room temperature and safe to put in the pitcher. So I'm just going to go ahead and pour that on into the pitcher. I've also cut up some oranges, some orange slices. Chamomile goes good with a lot of flavors, um, but it goes really good with citrusy flavors, orange rind, apple, things like that. So I'm going to add some orange slices into my tea as well as my ice cubes. And these little stars I got in Bed Bath & Beyond and they're actually reusable ice cubes. So I thought they were so cute and fun for the summertime. I got them last year. 
so I'm just going to be using them today. But you guys can use regular ice cubes as well. Um, but like I said, remember the ice cubes will water down the flavor a little bit, so allow your tea to steep for a little bit longer if you're going to be using regular ice cubes. time this has actually been one of my favorite meals lately like I said this is a gym day for me so I want to get in as much protein as possible so I'm going to be um, cutting up some sweet potatoes also about half of an onion and these Brussels sprouts that actually come already seasoned I find them at Trader Joe's I never tried Brussels sprouts until recently I feel like they were that food item that on all the shows none of the kids ever wanted to eat and they were forced to eat so I just never wanted to try them. They're actually really really good. So once I chop everything up I'm just going to grab a pan and I've lined it with aluminum foil and also sprayed the aluminum foil with some coconut oil cooking spray and I'm just going to place my Brussels sprouts on one side, my chopped up sweet potatoes on the other side and the onions somewhere in the middle. Now the sweet potatoes depending on how thick or thin you slice them or chunk them up it's going to take longer if they are thicker so keep that in mind um, but I set my oven to about 375 degrees to preheat and since the Brussels sprouts do take a little bit longer and I like them to be very soft, I, it's okay to like chop up the sweet potatoes a little bit fatter because the Brussels sprouts are going to take some time anyway. So I leave it till about 40 minutes and then I check it, sometimes 50 minutes or so. It really depends on your ovens because everybody's oven is different. Oops, and I almost forgot before I actually pop it into the oven, I do season it. Um, the Brussels sprouts are already seasoned, but I add some more seasoning anyway and season all the other stuff as well. So I just use this pretty neat... Um, kind of spray bottle that we have for our cooking oil or olive oil. So there's olive oil in there right now. I just spray it over top of the veggies. Then I'm also going to be adding some ground pepper, some pink Himalayan sea salt, as well as some garlic powder. And I actually like spicy food, so I'm going to be adding a nice heaping amount of chili powder. But it doesn't really come out that spicy when you bake it. Um, but it does add a really nice flavor. So don't think it's going to be too, too spicy, but it is going to give you a nice little kick and a nice flavor to the veggies. So I'll check on the veggies, and when I see that they have about maybe 10 minutes left to roast, I'll start making everything else because this stuff cooks really fast. So I'm going to be making some couscous, and I like the roasted garlic and olive oil flavored one. Um, and I'm just going to be adding water as per the directions on the box, as well as the flavor packet that comes inside and a little bit of olive oil. And you're just going to let that boil. While that's boiling, I'm going to grab another pot and add in a bag full of spinach. I'm actually using baby spinach because I love baby spinach so much more than regular spinach. I don't know why. Um, so I'm just going to fill it up. And if the whole bag doesn't fit at first, it's okay. The spinach is going to cook down, so you could just add the remainder of the bag as the spinach starts cooking down. But I'm also going to add some vegetable stock in there as well, just to give it a little bit of liquid so it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pot. Um, I don't like adding too much veggie stock because sometimes it can be pretty salty. Uh, I try to get the ones with low sodium or without added salt, but they still can be pretty salty. So if I do need some more liquid later on, I'll add some water, which I think you're going to see me do um, later on. But I just let that cook down, and as that's cooking down, like I said, I'll add the rest of the spinach in, and the water should start boiling in the couscous as well. So once that water is boiling, I'm just going to add in all the couscous, and with a fork or a spoon, just stir it in, make sure it's all up in the water and all well combined and it's not like chunky or anything like that. And then once it's stirred in, you're going to turn off the heat and actually cover the pot and it's going to finish cooking just like that with no heat. Leave it about five minutes and it's good to serve. Um, and in that time, the spinach as well will be all cooked down. And your veggies will be ready and you can just plate everything and have a delicious dinner. And just to complete this meal, I'm also going to be slicing up the other half of the avocado that was left over from earlier this morning and having that as well. Um, I don't like leaving half of an avocado overnight because then the top layer gets brown and it bothers me. So if I use half in the morning for something, you better believe I'm going to find a reason to use the other half later on in the day. Yay! For 
for delicious vegan desserts that still give me my chocolate sweet tooth fix but are good for my body as well. But I'm just going to take a banana and mash it up. I'm actually using a potato masher. You can use a fork, whatever you need to use. Um, and just mash it up. I'm going to be adding one tablespoon of pure organic maple syrup. I'm also going to be adding half a tablespoon, but a pretty hearty half a tablespoon of peanut butter. Again, I'm trying to get in as much protein as I can on the days that I go to the gym. Um, one teaspoon of cocoa powder, and then one to two teaspoons of dark chocolate chips, and one to two teaspoons of ki any kind of nut. I'm using pecans today. You can use walnuts. You can use whatever you have on hand. Um, and just mixing it all up into like this really delicious cake batter looking thing. Then I'm going to grab a cupcake tray actually and some cupcake um, little paper wrappers. You don't need to line them or spray them with anything because this will, I'll show you guys later, it comes out really easily. It's not going to get stuck to it. But you're just going to plop your mixture into the little cupcake. What are they called? Why am I forgetting this word? The little cupcake holders, cupcake papers, whatever, and just plop it in there. Just fill it up and then I'm going to sprinkle the top with some coconut shavings just for decor and for a little bit of nice coconut flavor and then pop that into the freezer. You want to leave it in the freezer for about an hour to an hour and a half. You don't want it to be like super frozen but you do want it to be hard held together and nice and crunchy. Then once you're ready to take them out, you do need to kind of eat them right away because as soon as they come out of the freezer, they will start melting. But you can always just pop them back into the freezer. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I do have some previous what I eat in a day video. However, they are non-vegan because they're a little bit older, but you can still get some healthy meal ideas there as well. And of course, find substitutes if you are vegan. If those playing on the side, you could go ahead and click on that, or you could watch the video where I explain why I decided to transition to a more vegan lifestyle. Yeah, guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you really soon with another video. I love you guys. Bye.